Good afternoon, South Africa and Zimbabwe. Welcome to Global Education's webinar over here. I'm just going to put my little intro slide back on the screen there. Welcome to Global Education Study Abroad Virtual Expo. Um, we are a counseling family business that looks after students who want to study overseas. We look after your consultation, your UCAS, your IELTS. Your, we fast track your applications. We get involved with your student visas. You name it, the list goes on and on and on. But our focus is you, getting you the right resources and content. The most important thing is that you have the resources to make a calculated decision that's going to start the rest of your journey in your international education. It's the start of your life career as well. So please do take note of the information in this webinar. They are all recorded and we will share them with you again. So we've got a interesting university or pathway or college or I probably call them best in institution. They are a fantastic option in Western Australia. Um, they do a lot for local students in Australia as well as international students. There's a variety of courses. There's so much information that they offer and I highly recommend that you look at their website. And we will be sharing not only Michael Ingram's contact details, who's our regional manager for our area, who we talk to on a day-to-day -day basis. He works with all our team here at Globe Education to ensure you guys get the right support and services. Um, so here we go. We've got Tate from Western Australia. I'm going to let Michael take over and keep your questions in the chat box and the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end of the webinar. And please, please do give us a follow and follow Tate online. They're fantastic. Michael, the floor is yours. Thank you, George. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. If you're listening, I hope you are. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. And um, I hope this is going to be informative for you. I should be looking at the camera, not down at my share screen button, but I'm going to glance down one more time so that I can um, share my slides. Thumbs up from George, if that's on the screen, please. Sounds good. Hopefully the sound will work. <laughs> I thought I would start with, uh, with a, a nice picture of a, of a WA beach. Um, not that South Africa doesn't have great beaches. Those of you in Zimbabwe, of course, uh, unlucky, Mozambique or, or South Africa for you. So um, my name is Michael, uh, Michael Ingram. I'm from uh, TAFE International, Western Australia. As George said, it's an institution. Uh, we are a TAFE institution. TAFE stands for Technical and Further Education. T, technical, that's the key word. It's all about skills. You might have seen uh, that I, I called this webinar um, TAFE it to the next level. It's one of my favorite catchphrases. I also like this one down here, the skiller instinct. Basically, it's all about getting recognized skills. It's all about taking those skills and using them to get you into the workforce, uh, into, a, into a good uh, uh, job, into good employment. But it's also about doing that in Western Australia, which is basically the best place to come as an international student. This is where I came as an international student. So um, before we get on to information about TAFE, I just want to give you a kind of a, a quick sort of a whirlwind tour, if you like, of um, Western Australia and Perth. Somebody else has joined us. Who's that? All I can see is global education, no name, just says, and me. Well, it's nice to have you. I'm guessing that's uh, one of the global team, fantastic team they are, and we work very closely with global. So um, good to have you uh, listening in. Oh, that was you. Both of us are studying Perth as international Oh, yeah, sorry. So Yes, you did. That's right, George. There's now four people attending. Hang on, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Judy and Precious. Okay, good. So um, welcome if you've uh, if you've just tuned in. So we'll talk more about TAFE in a second. Let's just give you a very quick kind of whirlwind tour of Perth and Western Australia. As I said in the, in the title of this webinar, TAFE it to the next level, um, but also coming to the, the world's sixth best, best place in which to live. That's actually an official ranking. So, so why would you want to come to Western Australia? Why would you want to come to Perth? That's obviously a picture of Perth in the background. Uh, Western Australia is the largest state in Australia. That's very important. Um, we have a huge footprint here. We have a, a very strong economy. We're basically propping up the entire Australian economy at the moment with our uh, resources um, industry. Perth is the capital of Western Australia. It is officially Australia's most affordable major city. So there are five major cities in Australia, uh, Perth, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide. We're officially the most uh, affordable. In terms of livability, the Economist magazine, very well-respected British publication that basically looks at the global economy, 
on a monthly basis. They do an annual ranking of uh, major global cities in the world, about 150 of them, they rank them. And we have been ranked number six in uh, 2021. So that's very exciting. That puts us ahead of uh, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, um, which is good for you as a student. There are reasons for that, and uh, I'll touch on those in just a moment. But the other reason why students choose to come here to Perth is because we have a regional designation. This gives you uh, additional opportunities after you have studied to explore staying here on temporary or even permanent visas later down the line uh, and find work. So um, very well connected. Look, things are opening up now. So uh, Western Australia has opened its borders once again. So in terms of connectivity, uh, South African Airways will be flying once again uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, Emirates, Emirates, Qatar, Etihad, these are all major sort of connections, if you like, from South Africa through to Western Australia. Uh, and eventually, I have a feeling Qantas will probably be putting direct flights on between Perth and Johannesburg uh, to make it very easy for students to get here. We are Africa's closest Australian city. That makes a big difference in terms of time zones. Makes it very easy for you to keep in touch with friends and family back at home, uh, or at least as easy as possible in Australia. Instead of being uh, nine hours ahead, you are only really ever six hours ahead. So going back to livability, what is it that makes us so livable? It's about balance for me. The key word is balance. We're not too big, we're not too small, not too busy, not too, too quiet. So it's all about balance as an international student. Balance is so important for getting around, for meeting people, for your stress and health, in order uh, for, for you to, to study effectively, in order to com complete your units and com complete all your assessments, but also to find part-time work uh, that hasn't got too much competition for it, um, that gives you some flexibility. So there's a lot going for Western Australia. Just like the rest of the country, we do have a world-class education system, lots of part-time employment opportunities at the moment, particularly in hospitality. Um, and really, look, you know, we have a Mediterranean climate here. Those of you who've been to Cape Town, it's pretty similar to that, maybe even a little bit better. We basically have the best climate in Australia. Uh, but it's not all about the outdoors. We also have fantastic shopping culture. Uh, entertainment opportunities. I'll show you some pictures uh, in a moment. Here's the current top 10, not that I'm trying to persuade you to go to any of these other cities, but I just want you to see them in, in, um, in the context of, of their comparisons. So basically, no city is ever able to get 100 out of 100 on the Economist Global Livability Index. Um, Auckland is currently number one, but you can see that Perth is only three or under three points behind. So that's very exciting. Um, a lot of good reasons to come here. And in fact, here's a little strange little thing to look at, which I stumbled upon the other day. This is very interesting. This is comparing uh, the public transport train network in the five major cities in Australia. And so this one here is Adelaide, this is Queensland, this is Sydney, and this is Melbourne. And this is Perth's public transport system here, the trains. So not only have we got five stars in every category, but we actually have done that now for something like five or six years in a row. So very easy to get around on high quality public transport, but as a student, you also get 40% discount on that public transport, which you don't necessarily get in the other major cities. Um, so that's very attractive. Quick geography lesson for you. Here's Australia. So Perth is down here in the Southwest corner. I won't bother telling you where the rest of the cities are because you don't need to know because you're coming to Perth. But that's the size of Western Australia. And if we just have a look at a few pictures, quick holiday now for you or virtual holiday around WA. This is the very famous blue boathouse. You might look at this picture and think this is, you know, miles outside uh, the city somewhere in the, in the rural areas. But this is actually only about one or two kilometers down the river from the city center. Uh, it's become a very iconic kind of uh, a landmark, particularly for people with Instagram accounts. And then about 25, 30 minutes from the CBD is Cottesloe Beach. Uh, very good place to swim and hang out, relax with friends. Uh, they have a, a sculptures by the Sea Arts Festival once a year here, which is really cool. Uh, lots of swimming carnivals. It's very safe to swim, particularly during summer. Uh, you can see the red and yellow flags over here. So lots of lifesavers on duty. But also this is actually a great place to try and find part-time work. Behind those trees in the background, there are lots of cafes and uh, bars and restaurants. 
Uh, that's the CBD. And this is Northbridge, which is basically our entertainment precinct where you'll find clubs, galleries, uh, museums, um, restaurants, uh, comedy clubs, that sort of thing. And in fact, our, one of our most popular campuses, if not our most popular campus, is actually right next to where this photograph was taken. Some key landmarks that uh, that stand out for students, Cicerello's Fish and Chips, incredibly popular. I mean, I, I was an international student here in the, in the late 90s, uh, and I used to go to Cicerello's Fish and Chips, and it's still there, and it's still popular with, with friends, uh, uh, with students and their friends, as well as students and their families when they come out to visit. A little further north of Perth, up the north coast of Western Australia, you'll find Ningaloo Reef. This is a, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so lots to see and do up there and explore that sort of quintessential classic Australian outback. But then if you go to the south of Perth, uh, about four or five hours south of Perth in the southwest corner, you'll find this, uh, which is the uh, treetop walk in the Valley of the Giants. And this treetop walk is, um, is an amazing thing to do, particularly not just because of the views and, and the bird life you get to see in the top of the trees, but these trees exist nowhere else in the world. So the trees in that photograph only exist in that area that you're looking at. Uh, so it's incredibly unique. It's, a, it's an amazing ecosystem. And if you don't want to go too far afield, uh, or if you don't have time to go too far afield, this picture here is from the Swan Valley, which is just outside the Perth CBD, where uh, students love to uh, go and hang out. Lots of wineries, cafes, restaurants up there, but also uh, opportunities to look at the wildflowers in springtime, which is September, October. Karijini National Park up in the northwest of uh, the state. Again, another UNESCO World Heritage Site. Absolutely beautiful. This is starting to look a little bit like Stellenbosch or Cape Town, and, uh, and it, it's true, it is very similar. Uh, this is Margaret River, which is um, a very famous uh, winery uh, area, very famous hospitality and tourism area. Uh, and we have a campus down there in Margaret River. And then back to the CBD, this is a little bit more of a recent photograph than the one I showed you earlier. So you can see that Perth is, you know, it's not a country town. This is a, this is a thriving metropolis. There is lots going on. And in fact, a lot of major corporations like BHP Billiton here, Rio Tinto here, a lot of major corporations have their uh, global headquarters right here in Perth. Optus Stadium, or Perth Stadium, I should more accurately call it. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you this picture is because uh, I know South Africans and Zimbabweans uh, love their sport, love their cricket. Um, but this is actually Australia's number one sporting and entertainment complex. Now, it's very important for a student because not only does that give you opportunities to see and do things, we also have music events there. But when that stadium fills up, that's 50, 60,000 people. And that means lots of part-time jobs. So part-time jobs in, in hospitality, um, event management, uh, transport, you know, health and safety, uh, whatever it is, there is always something going on in that, um, in that stadium. So uh, we're very lucky. This, this stadium actually, by the way, uh, two years ago, won the Grand Prix prize in France in the World Architecture Awards for the world's most beautiful sporting arena two years ago. So that's very exciting. Perth Fringe, lots of festivals, lots of things to do. Uh, this is a very cool thing um, to do, the Perth Fringe Festival, lots of quirky little comedy events. Going back to that stadium, a lot of people uh, have the misconception that Sydney and Melbourne are the only cities where anything is ever happening in Perth, but that's completely untrue, of course. Uh, sorry, Sydney and Melbourne are the only things where things are ever happening in Australia, I should say, but it's completely untrue. Uh, stuff always happens in Perth. So U2 on the left, Eminem in the middle, and Taylor Swift on the right. All of these photographs have been taken at Perth Stadium. So uh, this was obviously before COVID and uh, lots of acts. I think I heard the Foo Fighters are returning later this year. So that's, uh, so that's good. And they'll be playing at that stadium. Very diverse population here in Perth. We recognize a lot of different communities. This is a celebration of Buddha's birthday in the Supreme Court Gardens, sponsored by the city of Perth. Rooftop movies during the uh, the Perth Festival, um, especially during summer. Uh, the night markets, which I think are uh, basically coming to an end now because we're in autumn. This is very much right in the city centre where you can go and hang out, have food from all sorts of different uh, cuisines. Or like a lot of international students, actually end up opening up a little uh, business and have a food van on the side. Uh, lots of students have done that. Catch a ferry from Perth up into the Swan Valley or down towards Fremantle or even go out to Rottnest where you can see the quokka, which is the world's most smiley 
animal. I'm not going to show you a picture of it because everybody has seen a picture of a quokka, I hope. And then just outside the city center, we have a, a miniature version of the treetop walk. Great architecture. This is the city library. I'm hoping that you're getting a feel for why this is such a great place to, to be a student, why it's such a great place to live. Here is the aforementioned five-star rated uh, public transport train system. This picture here has been taken from uh, Perth Station. Very easy to get around um, and connect wherever you go. So there's a misconception also that Perth is always hot, and that's not strictly true. So springtime, September to November, uh, pretty favorable temperatures. This photo here is from Kings Park, which is an amazing view over the city center with this beautiful road of, uh, of lemon scented eucalyptus trees. So when you walk under these trees, it just smells of like uh, lemon. It's the most amazing experience. So spring, very accommodating. Then you move into summer, December to February. So the seasons are similar to, to Southern Africa, to Zimbabwe and, and South Africa, except we don't have rain in summer. Our rain comes in winter, but summer is at the end of the year. But still pretty, uh, pretty comfortable temperatures, Cottesloe Beach again. Then you get into autumn, March to May. This photo has been taken from Rayburn Orchards where um, a lot of students like to go during autumn to uh, take, their, take their Instagram accounts and top up their uh, autumn leave uh, photo collection, but also to go to, again, all to, all to the to cafes and restaurants in, in the Perth Hills, uh, lots to see and do up there. Temperatures, pretty favorable. So we've just arrived in autumn now and it's very comfortable, I must say. Good time of the year, nice and still. And don't be alarmed by this photograph. This was a, this was a one-off, but uh, we don't get storms, fortunately, like uh, like they do in Queensland. Uh, we don't have uh, things like major flooding in in Perth, but we do get a bit of rain, and that comes in uh, that comes in winter, which is June to August. But as you can see, you know, up to sort of nineteen degrees, twenty degrees. In fact, I I remember a few years ago having a thirty degree day in the middle of June. So, you know, the climate's pretty pretty comfortable. Now, in terms of the economy. This is a little snapshot from last year. Western Australia is rapidly growing uh, compared to the other states. Victoria is still uh, basically, uh, in terms of economic output, the strongest state in, uh, in Australia, but Western Australia is catching it very fast and is forecast to actually pass Victoria because of our resources uh, industry. Here's another good reason why you wanna come and live in Perth. This is population per square kilometer of the five major cities. It's another reason why we are one of the most livable cities in the world. We only have a thousand people per square kilometer. It's almost double in Sydney, a little bit more in Melbourne, similar to Brisbane, but even uh, more sort of uh, spread out than Adelaide, which is a similar kind of city. That's good. It goes back to that point about balance. Rent prices. I Told you earlier on that we are officially the most affordable city in Australia, and it is true. This is looking at uh, the median rental price across the major cities in Australia. And as you can see, we are the cheapest. So that's a little snapshot of Perth and Western Australia. Very quickly, why acquire skills with TAFE WA? As I said, TAFE it to the next level, technical and further education. We are a government institution. That's a very good thing here in Australia. It means we are very well funded, very well established, very well regarded in industry. I'll get onto courses in a moment, but uh, we've got a lot of them. There's over a hundred, um, many of which offer pathways through to university for those of you who are looking for that, that pathway through to university. But we have over a hundred uh, courses all of which are delivered on uh, incredibly modern state-of-the-art industry standard facilities. We have about 20 or 30 campuses around Australia. Um, and you know, being a government institution, that means that all of those campuses are gonna have the latest equipment, lecturers who come from industry, who still have connection to industry. And basically when you graduate from TAFE, an employer is gonna look at you and say, oh, you're a TAFE graduate, come on in, because they know that you're ready to work. We teach practical skills, that's the focus. It's hands-on learning. I'd say probably about 70 or 80% of it is hands-on learning, uh, obviously with a little bit of academic um, thrown in as well. Now our fees, I'll get to that in a minute. We might be a bit more expensive than, the, than your average private vocational college in Australia, but you've got to think about what you're getting in terms of value for money, okay? 
So TAFE delivers national training packages. They are recognized vocational qualifications. So they are Australian government qualifications. They're not our qualifications. They're Australian government qualifications. So the Australian government says, we need skills in this area. So here is our course. Uh, here are the course requirements we want you guys to meet as an institution. Go ahead and deliver them. And then institutions across Australia go ahead and deliver them, some of them better than others. That's why you want to come to a government institution. I hope that makes sense. As you can see up here, we're part of the Department of Training and Workforce Development. Very, very uh, important to Western Australia's economy. We have colleges and campuses. I'll explain the difference in just a moment, all of which are across a regional and metropolitan uh, presence in Western Australia. Again, I'll show you just now. But conveniently located, so close to public transport, close to accommodation, uh, close to shops, um, sometimes even quite close to the beach, I have to say, which is very convenient. Certificate diploma and advanced diploma programs. Those are the only courses we deliver. We don't have any higher education degrees or associate degrees, but we, we kept, we've kept it simple for a, for a reason, and that's because we've got a lot of different course areas, and we want to deliver those to the best of our ability to you guys as students. So certificate diploma and advanced diploma, that's obviously an ascending scale up the Australian qualifications framework. Um, students can exit at different points. You just have a different level of, of qualification, if you like. Most students probably exit around diploma and then certificate and advanced diploma students are probably even as a, as a, as a rough guess. There are three things I want to really drum home to you. I want you to remember. Number one, we are Western Australia's largest education provider much bigger even than the universities. So we have uh, basically anywhere between 50,000 and 100,000 students enrolled across Western Australia at any given time. The majority of those are local students, of course. That brings me to point number two, which is diversity in students and staff. So with that high number of local students, uh, that means that the classroom is gonna be very diverse. So we only really ever have about two, two and a half thousand international students. Now, yes, some of those international students are probably focused on, on certain campuses, but by and large, you're going to be in incredibly diverse classrooms with a lot of local students. And when we say local in Australia, you know, Australians come from a lot of different backgrounds. We're not all Hugh Jackman or Shane Warne, bless his soul. We come from a lot of different backgrounds. Uh, lots of students from Latin America, from South Asia, from Europe, from North America, and of course, from Africa and, and Mauritius. Point number three is our history. Our history goes back over 100 years. So we've been teaching skills since the late 1800s to Western Australia's workforce as part of the Western Australian government. So that's, that's, what's, that's what's called reputation, okay? It's all about preparing students for the workforce. And when you come through TAFE, you're very, very well recognized. So colleges and campuses, we have four colleges, central and south regional, south and north metropolitan. Those are the four colleges or collectives, if you like, is another word for it. Within each of those, they are individual campuses. So some of our regional campuses are Geraldton, Bunbury, Margaret River, Albany. But Perth, the capital city of Western Australia, that's where these two metropolitan colleges exist. And if you zoom in, you will see lots of campuses, part of North Metropolitan TAFE, uh, north of the Swan River, and lots of campuses, part of South Metropolitan TAFE, south of the Swan River. So there's something for everyone. And if you look at satellite view, you can see that these campuses are often part of uh, what we call education precincts. So here you can see our Joondalup campus, pretty big, right next door to Edith Cowan University, similar size. Curtin University, this is the north end of campus. Our Bentley campus here, very big. Our Murdoch campus is down here next to Murdoch University and also Fiona Stanley Hospital, which is apparently the largest hospital in the Southern Hemisphere, somebody told me. I need to verify that. Somebody can go and fact check that for me. Fiona Stanley Hospital, is it the largest hospital in the Southern Hemisphere? Maybe we'll have a prize for the answer. George, let me know if we can arrange a prize. Somebody can find that out for me. Okay, and if we zoom down into ground level at those campuses, you can see that they all have a slightly different feel. This is Joondalup nice sort of bushland, uh, you know, Lakeland setting. This is our Northbridge City campus, very modern sort of architecture, very uh, dynamic. And this is our new uh, section of our Murdoch campus. So very young, very fresh uh, sort of uh, 
precinct style campus, if you like. So key courses, as I said, we've got over 100. I'm not going to go into them in great detail because we don't have time, but anytime you want to uh, arrange a one-on-one -on -one session with me and the guys at Global Education to go through these courses, please just let them know. But we have over 100 courses. Some of them are in areas that you are probably quite familiar with that you've heard of before. So accounting, business, uh, you know, engineering, electrical engineering, um, mechanical engineering, that sort of thing. So we do have a lot of stuff going on, but we also have some really unique study areas. So we have things like process plant technology in our oil and gas section. We have uh, 3D design, we have games uh, design. A lot of parents panic when, when their children say, I wanna go into gaming, I wanna do game, games art or games animation. This is actually a serious industry with really strong employment uh, opportunities. It's in fact a rapidly growing industry in Perth gaming. We also have fashion, interior uh, design. So there is a lot, early childhood education and care, community services, we have hospitality, commercial cookery, patisserie. So patisserie is basically becoming a pastry chef. Now, the salaries for pastry chefs are in the hundreds of thousands of Australian dollars. This is a serious occupation. A lot of people wanna eat pastry, cakes and chocolates, myself included. So lots of courses. Um, in fact, I just want to go back to one of them very quickly. I just want to point out aquaculture in terms of unique courses. There's also vet nursing, by the way. Aquaculture is an incredibly fast growing industry. Any country that has a coastline, ergo South Africa, this industry has to be taken seriously. But this is actually not exclusive to countries uh, with a coastline. I want to tell you a quick story about a student from Zambia. Anybody who's ever been to Lake Kariba and noticed that there's a freshwater um, crayfish, shellfish, that is now in Lake Kariba, that's actually a, an invasive foreign species from Australia. Um, I think the story is that it accidentally escaped from an aquaculture farm on the Zambian side of the lake when there was a major storm. It was very unfortunate. Uh, there wasn't much you could do about it. But that aquaculture farm is run by a former TAFE Western Australia student. And he's doing very, very well, very successful. Okay, university partners, Curtin University, Edith Cowan University and Murdoch University. Those are our three university partners. We have articulation arrangements with those universities, which means you will get credit towards your university degree, only for some courses, not, not all courses, but some courses. Um, and that you can also package with those universities. So those universities have their own pathway providers on campus like Curtin College and Edith Cowan College, very good institutions. But why not think about doing skills as a pathway through to university? Because then you get the best of both worlds. And in some cases, the credit is the same, one year of credit, but I'll tell you where the, the real crux comes, not just in getting the best of both worlds skills and academics, but cost. So a year of study in some of our courses is gonna be 12, 13, 14, $15,000. That's basically half the price of one of the pathway colleges at those universities. So value for money plus the addition of skills. Like I said, guys, TAFE it to the next level. Value for money. It is not just about uh, the piece of paper that you get at the end. It's not just about the skills. It's about the support. It's about the quality of learning. So you're going to be in small classes. You're going to have either a workplace simulation or a supervised work placement. And by the way, when we say workplace simulation, when you have things like hospitality, students studying with TAFE Western Australia, the workplace simulation is on campus, but it's actually a fully functioning, publicly open restaurant and commercial kitchen, just as an example. Uh, I've mentioned the facilities. They are fantastic, but we have uh, staff on hand to help you with your studies, your stress, uh, academic support, career guidance. Um, they are dedicated international coordinators on campus as well. A very quick look at fees. As I said, fees are kind of like 12 and a half up to $13,000 at the low end to around about 17 and a half, 18,000 dollars um, at the high end per year for our courses. That's tuition fees. Then you look at material fees and resource fees. This is typically money that goes towards getting stuff that you're gonna to get to keep, equipment, if you like. 
And those additional fees range from zero all the way up to $3,300 per course, not per year. So, you know, if you're, if you're doing a two-year advanced diploma of engineering, you know, that will be your, your cost for two years. The Australian government recommends about twenty dollars to $21,000 for living expenses every year for international students. I've knocked that down for uh, the purposes of this presentation for Western Australia, because it's my personal belief that you can actually get away with spending a lot less in Western Australia, not to mention the fact that you're going to be earning um, part-time work. So your, what, whatever your lifestyle is and what, what your work situation is in Perth, that dictates how much you're going to spend in terms of expenses. And you, know, you can get a part-time job that's paying like $30, $40 an hour, sometimes more depending on um, where you're working. Overseas student health cover, uh, $600 uh, per year per student. Now, I think hopefully we've got some time for some videos. Uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of videos, if that's okay, George. Just confirm we've got some time. Um, I'm just gonna go to that slide there. And then I'm going to go to the YouTube page. Bear with me. While Michael is setting up those YouTube links, for people listening in on this webinar, it is recorded and we will be resharing it with everybody as well. So then please do not worry. There's load shedding here in Karting in South Africa, Michael. Yeah. I remember load shedding well from uh, my time growing up in Zimbabwe, where my uh, where my mother still lives. So hopefully, I get to see her at some point in the not too distant future. Hello to everybody in Zimbabwe, by the way. Um, let me just share that one more time because I forgot to click share sound. Okay, so this is North Metropolitan TAFE. Advances in digital technology and the rise of automation is changing the future of work. Australian employers are increasingly looking for workers who can present creatively and think critically to solve problems. North Metropolitan TAFE delivers training that embeds the 21st century skills needed for the jobs of tomorrow to over 30,000 students a year. We're focused on producing skilled workers in the health, aged care, community and disability sectors to meet the demands of our ageing population. We work closely with the world's largest engineering and mining companies to provide customised workforce training to support this rapidly changing sector. At North Metropolitan TAFE, we integrate traditional trades training with new technologies to support WA's billion dollar building and construction industry. As new technologies emerge in IT, our graduates secure employment in highly specialised fields such as virtual and augmented reality, robotics and cybersecurity. Our location next to the vibrant Perth Cultural Precinct allows students to connect to local artists and industry so they can bring their creative ideas to life and step up onto the world stage. At North Metropolitan TAFE, we deliver innovative and flexible training solutions to transform lives, strengthen industry and build community. North Metropolitan TAFE, reimagine your future. Just unmute Michael. Um, no, Michael, your Zoom's on mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, brilliant. You know, honestly, we've been using Zoom for two years now, and uh, they still have not figured out a way to remind you that you're on mute. It's ridiculous. Okay, so I just want to point out that in that video, um, which hopefully you could see and hear, the imagery in that video is all from the TAFE campus. So the music studio and the stage, that's a TAFE campus. That's not a live performance somewhere. That's on the campus. Even the guys with the mining helmets on and the, and the spotlights on their helmets, that is actually under the campus in the CBD. So that's been, that's what we call a cut mine. It's a training mine. So even the childcare, I think, was on campus as well in Leaderville. Now, one more video I want to show you. This is very interesting. Uh, if anybody's interested in hospitality or commercial cookery, this is a really interesting video. This is from the Bentley campus, which is um, where we have Bentley Pines restaurant. It's a fully functioning, publicly open restaurant. It's open every day. But this particular video is... Um, one from a regular series of what we call great chefs, where we take some of Australia's best chefs 
and we bring them to the campus to do what we call a great chef's night. So they do a fine dining menu for members of the public to come and have a look, but also for students to understand what it's like to deliver fine dining. So let's have a quick look at that one. The Great Chefs and Great Wineries dinner series is now celebrating its 10th year and for that we are hosting probably West Australia's premier restaurant in the Wildflower Restaurant at the Como, the Treasury. And combined with that, we've selected one of the most award-winning wineries in Western Australia, coming from Mount Barker in Gilbert's Wines. These dinner series allows the students to work alongside some of the best chefs and to obviously gain a lot more knowledge about the wines and about the products, especially the regional products that we have here in Western Australia. Participating in Great Chefs Great Wines, it has been, for one thing, so exciting. I mean, there's a serious buzz going around the entire place right now. Uh, everyone's bustling and you can just feel the energy in the air. One of the biggest things is the honour of having Matthew Sartori here. It is um, very exciting. Um, the chefs are excited. The food smells heavenly just in the back in the preparation process. One of the greatest things as well is just the the simulation of that environment for everyone in hospitality and in the kitchen of um, these exciting kind of events that exist. I really like working with students because I feel like it really re-educates yourself. You know, cooking is something that's, you know, there's no end to what you can learn. And I think when you're teaching others, you really, it re really re-establishes, you know, your knowledge of what you are, are teaching. The students work alongside the chef preparing his menu, so the menu has been specifically designed to allow the students to work with, given their skills and their capabilities, and also extends them a little bit for skills and opportunities that they have not previously learned. I'm new to myself. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. Uh, let's go back to my contact details, which we promised you earlier on. Um, that's it from me, guys. I, I hope that was interesting for you. Can you still see my screen? I hope so, yes. Good. Yeah, can. Michael, and I think those two videos not only highlight the importance of really researching the place that you go and study, but looking at the lifestyle that you'll live. Um, for somebody like myself who studied in Perth and has lived there for 15 years, I've just recently returned to South Africa. Um, I can tell you what, it's, it's, it's not just the best place to study, but you really can create your environment that you'd like. You know, if you want to have a fast paced environment, you want to be yeah. more focused on your studies, um, you can have a bit of everything. You know, a lot of people think of Perth as just the sleepy, wait a while city in Perth, but it's what you make of it that really counts. Um, and I'm, I'm a person that did that. I wanted a busy lifestyle and worked in logistics and supply chain management. And um, I didn't have days off. It was full on. It was really go, go, go. So yeah. to, to parents listening in on that, you know, it's, it really depends on the individual itself. Um, the benefit of Perth, and especially with TAFE, is the support systems. And I can't stress that enough as a counselor here in South Africa and Zimbabwe. Um, so my question to Michael is leading on to that. How easy is it for a student to get involved with the support services? Is it a case that they just walk into a building? Can do they have to email? It was a little bit of everything. That's a really good question. Um, I'm going to st stop this share. If that's okay. Let me know if you want me to put it back up again. I just can't see. Uh, I can't see your face, George. That's better. Um, that's a very good question. Uh, it's very hard for institutions to identify when a student needs support. You know, if you've got 2,000 international students and, and tens of thousands of students in total, it's very tricky to keep an eye on every student all the time. So what that relies on is, is students stepping up and saying, hey, I need some help with something. I need some help preparing for a job interview. I need some help uh, with my English. Probably not often the case for students coming from South, Southern Africa, but it does happen with students from other parts of the world. Um, I'm, I'm feeling homesick and a bit depressed, or I need some help with a particular assessment, or um, I've got troubles in my accommodation, you know, all sorts of different things. Um, it requires students stepping forward and saying, uh, excuse me, I need some help. You've got to remember two things. Number one, as an international student, you, your fees are going towards not just the piece of paper, but that support. You are a paying customer, so take advantage of that and, and step up. 
But also point number two, remember that the staff are, are there to help you. They are gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna shout at you. They're not, I hope, they're not gonna tell you off for coming to seek help. They're gonna say, of course I can help you. Sit down. What is it that you need help with? So you've just got to have the confidence to step forward. And sometimes with students from myself included, I mean, when I first arrived here from uh, from Harare in Zimbabwe in uh, 1997, it's such a long time ago, it's very depressing. Um, I had a shocking six months to begin with. I really did, I've got to be honest. But that's nothing to do with Perth and nothing to do with the university I went to, entirely to do with me. I had a good time. I didn't go to class. I got very sick because I wasn't eating properly and I was partying every night. And one thing led to another, another and I just uh, ended up feeling very uh, homesick and, and, and not having a good time. So, and that's when I realized only because it was my hand was forced that there was support uh, available. Had I done it sooner, probably would have helped. So you've just got to have the confidence to say, you know what, I'm going to step forward. Just snap into the Australian mentality where you just have to ask. You just have to say, hey, that's that's I need some help. Yeah, I'm nodding my head listening to that because that's my biggest, I wouldn't say regret, but my, I wish I had done differently was take advantage of the support services. Yeah, um, I've taken advantage of now as an alumni of ECU University. So I went to Perth and uh, it's like in Jindalup at the Khan University. And um, I'm part of the alumni services. And that's something as well that kids don't take advantage of, especially international students who leave. Correct that they're you know they don't have to do anything with the university ever again but yeah. professional networking business networking um with TAFE as well as a post student Michael how does that work is it do they have that alumni function um do they have those types of services if you're a past student and you, you'd like to get information from or resources yeah that's a good question um that is something that TAFE is doing better and better as the days go by uh, one of the one of the big challenges with us, so we're different to a university. A lot of universities have have one or two major campuses. So ECU in Joondalup, ECU in Mount Lawley, Curtin's basically only got one campus in um, in Perth. Everything is centralised. Students are all in one place. They all get to know one another, uh, and they kind of all go through the same sort of uh, three, maybe four years, maybe even five or six if they go on to do postgraduate. For us. Our students are so spread out and we've got so many different campuses as part of so many different uh, um, TAFE WA colleges that it's actually quite difficult for us to um, connect. You know, you might have a student who's done, let's say, uh, early childhood education in on a Leaderville campus and you might who's from South Africa, for example, and you might have a student who's from Zimbabwe who's done uh, engineering on our Munster campus. And their opportunity to meet and engage is limited, but it is something we are we are trying to do more and more. So, for example, last year we, uh, believe it or not, had our very first dedicated international student graduation ceremony. So there are other ceremonies with local students um, included, and other other events and social events with local students included, run by the colleges. But as the international office, we had our own dedicated international student graduation graduation ceremony where we connected students from all the different campuses brought them together as one celebrated them and that's going to be something that we will um that we will repeat on a on a regular basis and on top of that there is study perth now study perth is uh, also a government entity here in perth and they do a lot of uh, um, connecting of students but we're doing it better and better still room for improvement we always want to get better for our students so yeah hopefully as students start to return there will be more opportunity. Yeah, that's that's the one thing you always hear from TAFE is um, that constant need to improve. And especially from us at Global, who've been representing TAFE in Southern Africa for since our, the start of um, when we first started working as a, as a business, um, it, the, the improvement in Western Australia, let alone TAFE, is, is vast. You, I mean, you look at the pictures from 1997 to 2000 to 2002 in just two-year increments mm -hmm. and completely yeah. change um, and yeah, services, sure. services include with that so michael i do appreciate you mentioning that um in your um initial presentation in the beginning we were talking about um it's australian government sort of skills that are listed out in terms of what they want and then you guys will go and you deliver it i think between the lines there 
you can see the business involvement in that as well. You know, the industry that needs certain skills or are lacking certain skills. And you can see that push being pushed through to TAFE as well, which is great. And something that parents here in South Africa and Zimbabwe um, don't completely understand. And I would love to get into this conversation for you now is, for example, the mining and the renewable sector. You know, you've got huge mining companies in Western Australia, which is the number one, you know, part of the GDP that Western Australia does. But those skills are constantly growing. And now post-pandemic, there's such a demand across the board, let alone mining, nursing, you know, chefs. Um, the opportunity to make a huge income and a lifestyle is never, it's never been, seen, been seen like this before. Um, what is your experience so far as you're coming out of the pandemic? Are you seeing these things translate into an uptick and more people wanting to study these skills? Um, are you seeing a lot more interest? Um, and and uh, are you, do, you, do you sort of agree with what we think here in Global that Perth is a mecca to where you can actually create an amazing lifestyle? Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. Opportunity is... is uh huge here in Western Australia. So those of you who haven't been following, uh, um, you know, the course of events through the pandemic in Australia, Western Australia and, and Perth as its capital, um, right from the beginning, uh, took a very strict and stern approach with COVID. Um, we basically shut ourselves off to the rest of the world. Uh, now, look, that had its advantages and disadvantages. It was hard for a lot of families, uh, myself included. My father died in Zimbabwe at the beginning of 2021, so beginning of last year, and I was not able to go back and see him before he died. So there are advantages and disadvantages. But um, what that has meant is that for two years of, of shutting ourselves off and getting our vaccination rate right up into the into the 90%, so we we're actually about 95% double vaccinated and about 70 80% triple vaccinated. Uh, in, in Western Australia's population. The two years we spent doing that and opening up now has allowed us to only uh, see COVID really as a community thing for the first time in the last month or so. Now you might think, oh my God, that sounds terrible, but it's actually like completely manageable. So life is normal. We're out and about, we're doing things. Um, so it's a very, very uh, interesting way of managing it compared to the rest of the world. Nowhere else in the world has uh, had that high level of vaccination rate um, prior to COVID arriving. We were lucky enough to do that. So now what that has translated through to is a huge interest in Perth. People looking to migrate, people looking to send their children here, people looking to come here and um, achieve skills because that two year cushion, if you like, that we, that we protected, that we, that we, that we just held on to, um, that allowed us to develop our economy, uh, which was very industry, uh, sorry, very resources based, resources industry based. Yes, it allowed us to develop that economy, the agriculture sector as well. Uh, tourism obviously fell back a little bit, but that resources sector, we, we really put a lot of time and money into that. We developed it and a lot of people benefited from it. And that allowed our, us to keep our economy very, very, very strong so that when we open the borders, which we've done in the last month or so, we're in the best possible position to expand off the back of that. So now it's more than just resources, which continues to grow. But spinning off that, you've got construction. You've got, like you said, logistics, huge industry. You've got public transport. You've got hospitality. You've got the creative world. I mean, you know, wherever there's expansion, create, creativity has to follow, whether that's something to do with marketing or whether that's something to do with graphic design or websites, whatever it is. We need those skills, developing apps. Uh, so the, the, the protection that we put in place for the resources sector for two years has resulted in this, in this massive spin-off um, of different areas that are rapidly growing. And so, yes, people want to be a part of that. People want to come from overseas to uh, achieve skills, either straight out of school, because they've realized that that's probably the best thing to do right now, rather than a university degree. But even more than that, we're seeing students who've already got a university degree, locals and internationals, upskilling, adding skills because they want to be recognized in the employment sector. So it's a very exciting time um, and it makes for a, a wonderful life here. Uh, and people are starting to arrive and the buzzes, the buzzes uh, which was already here is, is even greater now. 
I hope that answers your question, George. Michael, and um, thank you for sharing us much farther as well. So our sympathies and condolences as well from everybody here. Yeah, thank you. As well. um, Michael, you know, it's, I really appreciate having this conversation with you. You, know, you always give not just the, the student, the nation, but the lifestyle. And that's something that we really promote here. It's not just what you're going to say, what you're going to do with it and where you're going to go with it. That really counts. Um, so I do thank you very much. To everybody listening in, I'm going to put our contact details on the screen now. Um, on that screen, I'm just going to change that page quickly for everybody. Please do send us an email. We will get you in touch with a one-to-one -one with Michael and with ourselves as well. Have a consultation. The beauty of working with Global is we get you informed with everything well before you make any decision on where you're going to apply to. Um, and we do highly recommend TAFE. Um, and Perth especially. I'm biased to Perth. I'm from there. I found myself as a West Australian, as a Me Perthian. Too. Thank you all for joining. And Michael, please go have a coffee for me. I am missing a WA Long Mac topped up. You know what, George, just for you, tomorrow, because I've got tomorrow off, I'm going to go and sit down by the river at my favorite little coffee shop, and I'm going to have a Long Mac topped up extra hot. Brilliant. Send me that photo so we can post it up on our social media, please, Michael. I will. Okay. I will do. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely afternoon. And um, please check out your email. There's a survey that will come after this webinar. And for everybody listening on the recording, um, please click the links below and um, do click that subscribe button, follow with us. And we've got more information coming out. And we'll be meeting Michael, hopefully, in South Africa and Zimbabwe within the next two years or next year, hopefully. Hopefully, yes, please. That'll be good. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, Michael. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye.